that recording covers Dalton's law of partial pressures as one of the gas laws. What I have shown up here is a container or a box that holds five, uh, five little particles of gas. And we're saying that the pressure here is at five atmospheres. We have another little container here that has an atmospheric pressure of four atmospheres, represented by four little molecules of gas. Now, if we combine these two and put them into the same con another container of the same size, our total pressure will be the pressure that we have from the first set of molecules plus the pressure that we have from the second set of mo molecules. So we'll have that P total equals P1 plus P2. Each one of these is called a partial pressure. So the definition of a partial pressure is the contribution a gas makes to the total pressure of a gas in a mixture. Now let's take a look at a better drawing than what I have right here. Here you have a cylinder that is 5 liters and the partial pressure of our hydrogen is 2.4 atmospheres. You can see the hydrogen molecule zinging around in here. Here we've got another 5 liter cylinder. The partial pressure of our helium is 6.0 atmospheres. And when we put these two together, we have a total of 2.4 plus 6 equals 8.4 atmospheres. And all we've done is taken the molecules from both gases and combined them in a container with the same volume. So let's go ahead and we're going to write the gas law for this. And this is a pretty straightforward one. P total, that is our total pressure, equals the partial pressure of gas A, whatever gas A is, plus the partial pressure of gas B, plus the partial pressure of gas C, on and on and on to include all the gases that we have. So let's take a look at this. What is the partial pressure of oxygen in air at STP if the partial pressure of nitrogen is 79.1 kPa, the partial pressure of CO2 is 0.04 kPa, and P others equals 0.94 kPa? Remember at STP, our total pressure equals one atmosphere or 101.3 kPa. So let's use the 101.3 kPa so all of our units are, in con are consistent. So we're going to have 101.3 kPa that's our total pressure, equals 79.1 plus 0.040 plus 0.94. And then the last thing that we have left is the partial pressure of our oxygen. So it's just a matter of taking the 101.3 and subtracting all of the other ones. So we would take all of these, 79.1 plus 0.040 plus 0.94 equals 21.22 kPa. And remember, that is the partial pressure of the oxygen right there. Let's box it so that we know that's the final answer. Now, let's come down and look at this one. We have a sample of oxygen gas is collected over water at 20 degrees Celsius. The vapor pressure of water at 20 degrees Celsius is 15 millimeters of mercury. If the total pressure is 420 millimeters of mercury, what is the partial pressure of the oxygen? Well, before we do this problem, I want to show you what collecting a gas over water looks like. Here we have an apparatus that shows uh, a Bunsen burner that is set up over a, uh, under a container of potassium chloride. This is going to be heated up. And let's go ahead and watch what happens. Potassium chloride, KClO3, decomposes to potassium chloride, KCl, and oxygen gas, O2, when heated. Manganese boroxide, MnO2, is added to speed up the reaction. The oxygen gas produced in the reaction can be collected by bubbling it through water and collecting it in a bottle or graduated cylinder. As 
oxygen gas is generated, the gas bubbles rise to the top and displace water from the cylinder. This method of collecting the gas is based on the assumptions that the gas does not react with water and that it is not appreciably soluble in it. The oxygen gas collected in this manner is not pure because water vapor is also present in the cylinder. The total gas pressure is equal to the sum of the pressures exerted by the oxygen gas and the water vapor. Consequently, we must allow for the pressure of water vapor when we calculate the amount of O2 generated. The partial pressure of O2 equals the total pressure minus the pressure due to water vapor. So let's try working uh, this problem. We are told that our total pressure is 420 millimeters of mercury. We are told that the partial pressure of water, and that is the vapor pressure, that's the same thing. So let's write that in. Equals vapor pressure is 15 millimeters of mercury. And then everything else is oxygen. So what we're going to have is 420 equals 15 plus the partial pressure of the oxygen. Therefore, that's what these three little dots mean, the partial pressure of the oxygen has to be equal to 405 millimeters of mercury.